Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about JSON Simple. And JSON Simple is a library from Google that can parse JSON in a very simple manner. And when I say simple, I mean that the API is very straightforward. It uses only Java clauses underneath. It's compatible with Java 1.2. So it's uh, written in old code, but it's very performant. And it's also very good at parsing simple JSON document structures. So if you want to take uh, into something that is very complex or very large numbers and so on, this might not be the thing that you want to use. I use it very often in my work because we have JSON structures that are quite large, but they are very simple in their structure. And we're going to go into a bit of code here, but I can say that the limitations you want to know is that when it comes to JSON objects, there can be JSON objects, uh, JSON arrays, so it supports both arrays and object structures. It also uses underneath lists and hash maps, which are common Java objects, so we're very easy to, to work with those. But when it comes to things that are not strings in your uh, JSON, so you have numbers or you have booleans, they are converted to booleans and numbers in turn. And in that case, they are using um, the number class in Java. So the Java lang number. And that is actually underneath either a double or a long. So no larger values than that. So if you need something that is a big integer or something that is a big decimal, this is not the library for you. But that is not that much of a uh, limitation. You can actually use this with most of your documents. So let's jump over to some code here. If we look here at our code, we see that we have first off this JSON simple here. So this JSON simple is the Maven project that we want to read in. It's 1.1.1 and it's very stable. It has not been touched in 2012. That doesn't mean that it's bad. It's just that it's very stable and you don't need to change it. Um, we write these kind of things once and then reuse them a bunch of time. And this has been done well. So let's jump over to the JSON file here. And you see I have a very simple JSON structure here. Some kind of an invoice with some names and so on. And I haven't even used the number clause. Everything's are strings here. And I have a one boolean here, but there is not that much of a specific structure to this. And if we go into my application, the only thing I need to do is use this JSON value and then parse in a file reader or some kind of a stream and it will give me a JSON object. And this is the document that you want to use when you read things. And this example I have here, I have split it into a lot of different objects and so on, but I'm pretty much create objects while they're with their constructors. So I give this invoice object a document. So if we go into that, we have a JSON document here. And then I have something that reads an object from a document. So it will just fetch the document and give it to header. If we look at this structure, it looks for the key. If the key is not available, it will return null. Hopefully we'll never do that. And then it will fetch that key as an object because everything is at the start a simple object. Then you can transform it to either a JSON object, an array, JSON array, or a number or a string or something. So everything is object from the start and then you can reuse other things. So we look at this and see if it's a JSON object and then we will return that. So that's a very simple function for this. And if we look here, we see that we look for the ship to address. And if we find that object, we get that. And then we look for the key if it contains this key. And then it 
if it's a boolean and truthful then I will set the ship to address to the build to address in order to just handle that right off the bat and if you see here to the ship to if it's not uh, null I will set the other address to it and uh, if we go into header here we see that we look again if a, a key contains something and then we will set this ship date and in this case we have a string and we just parse that string so everything is you are able to cast these objects that you get from the getters into string number or uh, any of the JSON object or JSON array. So let's look at a little bit more interesting thing here. We want to look at the rows, the invoice rows. So here we see that we have the list of invoice rows. I will get that object. I will look and see that this is actually an array. So if we look here, we see that the invoice rows is an array of objects. So that's how you read that. If you are familiar with JavaScript, you see that this is similar to a JavaScript array with JavaScript objects in them. Then I will uh, take that uh, array and then I can just do a for loop over that JSON array because it's similar to a um, list. It has that interface and the JSON object has the interface of a map. So you can use the, these things as maps or as arrays, uh, exactly as you would do in Java, or use them as lists or uh, maps. And then we loop over those. If the uh, object we have here is a JSON object, then we know that we have a, an, a row and we can parse that row. And here we will look for the product ID, description and so on. If we knew that this product ID, on the other hand, could be a number, you could actually take this and for instance cast it directly to an int so we know that we can cast it to a number and get a double value out of it or we can cast it to let's see I don't think I had any any functions here to handle that uh, quantity could be a double for instance so if we do this we can actually say that this is a double and it will work as well so we can cast that directly to a double if we like Put back string there. That's pretty much it. It's a very simple API. It's very simple to use, um, but it has a lot of functionality built into it. If you want to create a JSON object, uh, you just do the same. You create a JSON object like this, new JSON object, and then you can use that exactly as you would with a hash map. You put some data, uh, into this object and if you want a data object for instance you can put that in there if you like you can uh, say that you want a list of something for instance we have a data list here put the listicles here and then we will just uh, change this up here and say that we have want an JSON array instead and that would be our list and then we can use the list exactly as we do any other list and put some uh, uh, some data into that and we can do that multiple times so this this would be a totally valid JSON object and if we want to save this object out we can get it as a JSON string if we like uh, so if we do I think it's faster to do like this it's out there and we write this we should be we should see this object as we have created it uh, to a string and uh, in the console so here you see that I created an object and it actually created it multiple times because this was the row, so it runs it multiple times. And you see here that we create this JSON string object very simply like that. And this JSON value has the parse method and also um, a write JSON string. So we can uh, take this um, object here and uh, create a new file writer for instance 
and uh, put that into uh, test txt like like that. Um, so that that we can write our our object out to a file if we like. So it's a very simple little way of working with your uh, structure and creating JSON object and also uh, reading JSON objects in from a file or a stream or anything like that. So it's very useful, it's old but very stable and I use it daily in my work. Uh, I hope that you found this interesting, I hope that you learned something today. Uh, if you found this tool very interesting or if you are using a different uh, JSON parser, please leave a comment in the comment section down below or if you have any other questions about the simple JSON library. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that and I really hope to see you in the next video.